Hey, podcast family. Speaking of love, it's all about love. Are you a single woman looking to attract the love of your life? Do you have yet to meet your soulmate? Or maybe you just need a tad of guidance with elevating your self-confidence. Do you want to love yourself more? If so, my next guest is here to help. Her name is Sandra Hay. Sandra is a love and relationship coach who specializes in helping single women attract their soulmates. Sandra's love coaching techniques have helped women across the globe gain confidence and tap into their self-worth. This Saturday will be full of love on Speaking of Love, the podcast at 12 o'clock noon via Facebook Live. So ladies, set your reminders and let's get ready to learn about real love. We hope to see you there. Okay, Sandra, we are live. We are live. We are live. Hey, everyone. (laughs) Good afternoon, everyone. And this is Speaking of Love, the podcast. This is my 17th episode, and I'm so excited to be here today. Today, I am here to talk about my favorite subject in the whole wide world, and that subject is love. And to help us bring this topic to the forefront today, I have a beautiful young lady, Sandra Hay. She is a love coach, a relationship expert, and she specializes in helping people find and attract the love of their lives, help them attract their soulmates. She is all about love, and I'm so excited to have her here today. Welcome to Speaking of Love, Sandra. How are you today? Hi. Well, I'm perfect, especially when I hear the topic. That's amazing. My (laughs) favorite topic as well. (laughs) Yes, yes. It's such a blessing for you to be here today, and I don't take this uh, lightly. I take it very seriously. This show, Speaking of Love, the podcast, was created in honor of my father. My father, his name was Herman McAlpin. He was a radio TV broadcast engineer here in Detroit. He had a radio show many years ago called Speaking of Sports. So sports was his specialty. And unfortunately, my father committed suicide back in March of this year. So to continue his legacy, to continue his love, I am here today on this platform. And I just want to let you know that this, what we're doing right now, is very sacred to me. So thank you, Sandra, for being here. Thank you so much for having me. Just when I hear your mission and the reason behind this podcast, it's really it's really something special. Like even when you are sharing it, the, the energy that you are sharing it with, just you can feel all the emotions and everything that is behind. So really, thank you for having me here. Thank you so much. So Sandra, let's talk about love. How did you get started as a life coach and a love coach? Well, that was quite a journey because I didn't come from the background that I started dating and I found my soulmate and we have our happily ever after. It was complete opposite. So for years and years and years, I was dreaming of having that love story of having my soulmate next to me of sharing my life with someone and what I was finding were completely it it was complete opposite like guys who don't want to commit wrong guys guys who want something casual nobody wanted real that that relationship that I was looking for Mm -hmm. so after a few bad experiences especially one very bad experience for me it was like no this is enough no online dating no dating at all until I figure this out. I'm not going dating anyone. And instead of really looking what was wrong wrong with these guys, instead of looking um, in these external elements, I turned inward and I started asking myself what I can change in myself, how I can become that woman who is attracting this man that I want. And I really started working on my confidence, on my uh, on loving myself, on really raising vibration in, in my own life. And uh, yeah, in six months, basically my life shifted completely. So in six months, I downloaded this online dating app again. After, okay. And I was using it before that for years. But this time I felt different. This time when I was matching with guys, it was completely different energy and I knew exactly who I was looking for and I didn't even want to waste my time with anyone else. So at that time I matched with one guy and I went on a date with only one guy who became my husband 18 months later. So after finding him, I um, started applying the same process with my friends 
you know, they were looking for love. So I was just giving them a few tips. And I realized that this is working. If we are working on ourselves, we can really create that life that we want and attract love that we want. And when I saw these women transforming their lives, I was like, you know what? I have to spread this message. I really have to help as many women as I can. And that's exactly what I'm doing now. I'm helping women attract their soulmates and get that relationship that they desire by really building that empowering relationship with themselves first because that relationship is basis for everything else so sandra what is the process when a single woman comes to you and she says that she's in search of her soulmate what are the steps that you give her to help her attract the soulmate a uh, process is very similar to what i went through what i was using with my clients so far and it really requires a lot of that internal work so what we do first is really we define what is it that you want like what is that relationship that you desire mm -hmm. that man that you want what kind of qualities he has what are his values what is his behavior how he treats you uh, what kind of dates you are having what is the future that you are planning all of these details and not not even the details but just vibration of that relationship just feeling how you will feel next to that man in that relationship when we define that that is basically the first step then we are bringing you to align so basically your desire is here and then you are bringing yourself in alignment with that desire and we do that first by clearing all the hurt and pain from previous relationship and then building confidence stepping into self-worth loving yourself really bringing yourself um in alignment with that desire. And from there, then comes action, then comes dating, then comes opening up to receive love and really attracting that man in your life. So yes, it is really deep and um, really deep work that we are doing, but also it's so rewarding because it's not only that it gets you to a place where you are attracting your soulmate, but it really gets you to a place where you love yourself and really increase the amount of love in your life. And you know, Sandra, I think it's so important what you're saying, because a lot of times we have a lot of, as women, we carry a lot of emotional pain and burdens from our past. And then we're in a relationship with someone, they break our hearts, we are not together anymore. And so to try to subside that pain, we move forward into a new relationship. And then we bring all of the hurt, all of the pain, all of the projections onto this new person who hasn't done anything to deserve to have to go through this. So I think it's very important what you're doing. What you're doing is commendable because you're helping heal the past before going forward into your next relationship. That is 100% true because whatever we have with us, other person won't heal it. We will just bring it with us. We have to do that internal work to remove all of that because that is what we have within. It doesn't have anything to do with other guys with other relationship it's just what we have here so until we heal that really what you said we will be bringing it in any in every other relationship unless we heal it before that now sandra a, a lot of times okay i'll go back to my father for example my mm -hmm. father was a very intelligent very smart man he had a lot of love around him but he wasn't able to receive that love that was around him. So how do you know if a person is lacking self-love or if they're not open to receiving love? How do, you, how do you make them open up to it? Well, that is exactly what I'm saying to, to women. What you said, we are always surrounded by love. Love is, always exists around us, but just sometimes we are so close because uh, as you said, if we have a lot of pain from our previous relationships, we are so closed because we don't want to get hurt. If we close from pain, we are automatically closing from anyone else, from any, everything else, like love, like joy in our life. And unless we open up to receive love, we won't be able to receive it. I'm always saying to women, first, you have to love yourself, because if you don't love yourself, you won't be able to recognize that somebody loves you. Even when somebody tells you, I love you, you won't mm -hmm. believe them. You will think, oh, what is the motive behind what they want? Yeah. Why do they love me? Like, yeah. how they want something from me, they will hurt me, I don't trust them. And then you will subconsciously push that person away. So really, we always have to start with ourselves, to love ourselves. And that is the way to opening up to really receiving that love from other people. So what's the first step 
to receiving love, what is the first thing that an individual needs to do to open up and just allow someone else to love them? So for me, that is really question, do I love myself and how I feel in my own skin? And when we see our emotions, they are our guiding scale. And by observing our emotions, we can really see where we are. So if I ask myself, how do I feel in my body? Do I feel good or not that good? Because if it's not that good, that means that their love is lacking because love is one of the highest vibration emotions that exist. And mm -hmm. that feels good. So if I don't feel good in my own skin, that means that self-love is lacking. So I can ask, how do I feel about myself? How do I feel about my body? How do I feel about my environment? How do I feel about anything that is related to me? Because mm -hmm. if these emotions don't feel good, that means that love is lacking and we have to address that. So for me, that is always the first step. Just seeing when I ask these questions, is, is it a good feeling or it's bad feeling? For some people, that will be doubt. For some people, disappointment. For some people, it will be anger. And for some people will be joy and happiness and love. And that is that fundamental difference. Are we loving ourselves and, and are we open to receive love? Because we can receive love only when we are in vibration of love. And that means that I have love already here. Mm -hmm. So Sandra, let's say that we have a lady who has attracted love into her life. The next step is keeping that love around. So what are you, what, what's your advice for finding the relationship and keeping it? Well, for me, uh, uh, when we, when women say keeping relationship, it's almost like that uh, can slip. So I have to keep it. I have to hold it tight. I have to hold it here. And mm -hmm. that is very possessive. That is not love. That is attachment. And that is the huge difference. Okay. Because if I'm attached um, to you and if I need you, that is not love. Love is freedom. Love is very light. Love doesn't have that attachment to it. So I always say, you don't keep men. He chooses to be with you. And that's it. You mm -hmm. cannot keep anyone unless they decide to stay with you. And they will decide to stay with you when they feel good, when they feel loved, when they feel loved towards you. That means that they have to experience that love and that freedom. And then they have to feel really good in that relationship. And they will feel next to uh, good next to you when you feel good in your own skin. Because there is nothing more attractive than confidence in somebody who knows who they are, who loves themselves. You know, like when you see somebody who is in their zone, who loves themselves, who, who has confidence, you are so attracted to that person. It's like mm -hmm. going and you want to be around them, right? But, mm -hmm. but when somebody is like, oh, I want to keep you. Why are you talking to that person? Don't go there. I don't like this. Who wants to be in that energy? It's like, I want to be free. I want to enjoy my life. Why would I stay next to this person who is like always nagging and always, you know, finding something negative? And that happens when we are insecure when we don't love ourselves, when we are not confident, that's when we are pulling and trying to keep somebody next to us. Mm -hmm. You're very, that's correct. Sandra, you have built your life around helping people discover love and to find love. Can you give us an example of a success story that you have achieved in your business? Absolutely. So one of my favorite stories is um, uh, an amazing girl called Anna. And she, she never had long-term relationship. Like she has very positive energy. She's amazing, very successful in her career, but she was always having these short-term relationships, never open to receive love. And we started working together, you know, like when somebody's just like talking a little bit about it, but they are not considering that important. Mm -hmm. And when she started opening up, we really came to that realization, what is it that she wants? What kind of man she's looking for? Exactly, I started taking her to the, through the same process that, that I um, described at the beginning. And she also started dating online. So that final step was like to start dating. And for her, that was inspiration to start doing it online. And she met a guy, uh, also went only on one date with one guy. I mean, it was really miraculous. And she went with him and that was it. They are now together for, I don't know how long, like mm -hmm. more than a year, I think already. Yeah, I think something like that. And it's absolutely amazing to see, to see somebody who got first time in her long-term relationship at the age of 37, just when she opened up, when she realized what she wants, when she 
really open to receive that love it was just like that and wow. it was really miraculous so for me seeing that because when you are doing this work it's not only that you are making this woman happy you are automatically making another p- person happy right because love has the triple effect so you make her happy her partner happy his family happy her family happy so basically you are then bringing this love to family to environment and yeah it's really amazing so that that's my favorite part <laughs> now sandra uh how do you keep the love alive a lot of times we get in relationships for myself i've been married for four years and we work hard at trying to keep our love alive but with work and things of that nature how do you recommend that couples keep love alive in their marriages and their relationships, even in your basic relationships, mother and father relationships or your relationships with your sister. How do you always keep love alive? Well, that is exactly a conversation that I had with my husband the other day, because I was really thinking like from male perspective, what is it for you that you consider the most important? Because this is the question that I get really often. And conclusion is the same from me, my perspective from his perspective when, when you see successful relationships first thing is you have to prioritize relationship because energy goes where your focus goes right so if you put priority in your relationship that is where your energy will go and that is where things will flourish and the second thing that i will say is communication like real open and honest communication so if i feel that passion is not there anymore, that I'm lacking something, I would really openly and honestly say this to my person, hey, this is what I need more of, do you feel the same, what we can do about it, so because we all had passion in our relationship, right, when you started dating your husband, Mm -hmm. you would do anything for him, right, (laughs) (laughs) yes, we all know that we have passion, it's not that we never experienced it, we know exactly that time he was your priority, you enjoy dating him, you will always doing some different things. So why not do the same now? Tell yeah. him, you know what? let's schedule a date every Tuesday. Let's make Tuesday our date. <laughs> let's schedule something only for us. Just whatever you were doing before, start doing now. Keep doing it, yeah. Right. I know I know for me, I'm an artist and I do a lot of painting. And when I'm painting, I look absolutely horrible I have on like a really big old nightgown I've got paint everywhere I have a scarf on my head so I always tell my husband when you're on your way home from work call me call me first let me know when you're on your way so a couple days ago like I'm at the kitchen table and I'm painting I've got paint everywhere I just look horrible and he walks in and I'm like oh what are you doing here you were supposed to call me and tell me you were coming and he says why do you want me to call you I says because I don't want you to see me like this and he goes we're married so what I says yes but if you and I were dating I would not let you see me like this. So I want to continue to be that way with you. <laughs> yeah, to keep that magic. <laughs> yes, yes, I don't want you to see me like this. And then, I, and then I threw it back at him. I said, if you had seen me like this when we were just dating, would you still be with me? He goes, yeah. I'm like, you know what to say, right? <laughs> but honestly, when you said that you are painting, I just think when you are painting that you are so much in your element that you are glowing. <laughs> that doesn't be important what you have on you or if your hair is like that or whatever. I feel that you are glowing then and that is very attractive actually. <laughs> wow, well, you gave me a new perspective, a new way to look at that. <laughs> exactly. I mean, especially, you know, like you can, because for example, during now pandemic, like I never spend this much time with my husband because he started working from home. I'm working from home. So it's basically 24 hours, seven days a week. It's just it, me and him. And at the beginning I was, you know, a bit like, oh, how this is going to work. You don't have like, you know, that space that you had before and all of that. But actually that made relationship only stronger because we started seeing each other in different light than before maybe like you stay a bit messy and all that and for me that really brings new depth to relationship you start accepting that person on completely different level you know now Mm -hmm. I start accepting some like flaws let's say or however (laughs) you call them but still that is my person and I will accept him with all that so yeah for me that is new depth of relationship That's wonderful. Well, since you've mentioned your husband, tell me a little bit about your family life. Do you have any children? How long have you been married? (laughs) Well, we are married now for a bit over a year. Uh, So 
we met in November 2017. So that's almost three years. We got married 18 months later. Now we are married a little, a little bit over a year. And uh, yeah, we actually met in Dubai because I was working there and he was there as well. And he's from UK. So we moved to UK last year and now we are here. Oh, that is so <laughs> wonderful. You know, yeah, Sandra, so I'm so ex inspired by you. When I first saw you on, I think it was Facebook, and you mentioned yeah. that you were a love coach, I knew that I wanted to have an interview with you to find out what exactly is a love coach. I've heard of a life coach, but I just love what you're doing. I admire your, your strength to come forward and help people find love and help people learn to, first of all, love themselves. That's the most important thing. Exactly. loving yourself first because if you don't have that foundation what do you have well exactly because for me actually my mission is to bring more love into the world but I know that that love really starts with us because can you imagine the world if all of us love ourselves yes I mean like that's it there is there is no then space for anything else because when you love yourself that is exactly what you feel for others because you are only open and to receive love but the same way when i uh, uh read about your podcast and the mission behind it it was like wow like you can really feel that energy and really that love behind that so i mean it's it's really amazing what you are doing well thank you my dad was an amazing guy um, in spite of what happened he was a wonderful person and I'm just so broken hearted that he decided to commit suicide and take his own life. But uh, before he committed suicide, he actually killed his wife first. So it was a murder suicide. And his wife was a beautiful person and she was someone who loved him unconditionally. So he had a lot, a lot of love around him, but for some reason, whatever he was going through mentally, emotionally, he wasn't able to receive all the love that was around him. So there were, there were a lot of things happening in his life that I didn't know about. So I was inspired to do this podcast, not only because my dad used to be a radio personality, but because of the element of love. My dad needed more love. He needed to know that he was loved. He could give love to everyone around him. He was a bright light in a dark room. He was a wonderful person. But behind closed doors, something happened. And I think when bad things happen to people, it's always a lack of love somewhere that contributes to the problem. I used to work in a school for many years. And when you would find a child who had a lot of discipline problems, it would be because there was a lack of love in the home somewhere. Mm -hmm. When you have people who are struggling with weight, there's a lack of love somewhere. When you have people who are in addictions, there's a lack, lack of love somewhere. So love is everything. And that's the purpose for my show. So thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. But for me, it's really amazing that you turned that really hard story from your family into something so beautiful that you find that inspiration because you know like uh, I, I really feel that what you are doing is really to be admired because a lot of people from that story would take I'm victim it's hard for me and they yes. will really stay here they will stay into that like and you, you cannot blame them because it's very hard I mean most of us would probably do the same you know like it's they will just stay in that pain but to find love in that pain and to start doing something to inspire others I mean that is wow really I don't know what to say I, I cannot <laughs> find the word to describe that that's really amazing I mean I have chills now <laughs> oh well thank you Sandra thank you so much for saying that in addition to having your love coaching business and helping inspire women to love themselves more helping them to attract their soulmate. I've also learned that you're a pranic reader, a pranic healer. Can yeah, you that is energy that? healing. Now, that what is exactly energy. is that? So uh, prana is life energy. So basically pranic healer is energy healer. So we are using energy from our environment to heal um, to heal any condition on our, in, on our body, basically. So yeah, that is like feeling the energy field around us and using that energy from the from the environment to heal our physical bodies. Okay, so you do you mean like if a person has high blood pressure, you can heal it through energy? Yeah, yeah really? Exactly. Because wow. um, well, it stands from the um, 
from that, that we have different bodies. We have mental body, emotional body, we have physical body. So before physical, everything is energetic and every disease first become, begins on your energetic body mm -hmm. and then it comes to your physical body. So even with energy, we can uh, sometimes feel that, that something is coming, we can prevent it. But even when it's there with energy, we can heal it because these two are very closely connected. Oh, wonderful. Now, how long have you been in that practice? Oh, I started doing that last last year, but I, uh, I'm i pharmacist. Um, I have a master's degree in pharmacy. So before all of this, I was healing people in some different way. And my my path was really to come on, on this side, let's say, to start healing people through love and with energy and yeah, different approach to healing. Now, Sandra Hay, how can we, we it, if any of my viewers or my listeners would like to reach out to you, what is your contact information? How do we reach out to you? Well, as everyone, I'm on social media, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm mainly on Instagram. My handle is the Sandra Hay. I can uh, just give you links so you can give it to your um, listeners. Yes. And also, Facebook. I'm going to tag you in the Facebook yeah. Live as well, so they'll be able to reach Absolutely. you that way as well. My Facebook page is as well, the Sandra Hay, and my website is Sandra Hay. So you can find me through all these channels. Now, Sandra, we're here, we're talking about love, but I have to ask the million dollar question on this program. How do you define love? Wow, how do I define love? Um, for me, love is a state of being. It's not emotion, it's not feeling, it's really state of being. It's one of the highest vibrations. And in core of our beings, we are love. We are spiritual being that is made of love, that is made of light. And that is who we are in our core. Everything else is illusion and something that we can overcome. And when we find that core, when we find that love, that is exactly when we can live our purpose, when we can love others, when we can contribute to others. So yeah, when we find our true nature, which is love, we can really accomplish what we are came here to be. So for me, love is a state of being and our co core of our being, definitely. Wonderful, I love it. So what's next for you, Sandra? Well, um, next for me is definitely to, um, to coach as many women as I can through, through my coaching business. But also as entrepreneur, I'm starting my other business now, which is I will uh, open healthy food store. So again, as pharmacist, as chronic healer, I will start um, healing people through this. So that will be um, that will be opening in October. And also in my coaching business, we will start into introducing not only one-on-one -on -one coaching, but we will have group coaching courses. And next month, I'm starting podcast and YouTube channels. So yeah, many exciting things are coming. And I would really like to say to your listeners, if any of single women need help with this, I have free love breakthrough calls. So if anyone wants to talk about what is happening in their love life and what they can do to, to overcome it and to find their soulmate, please let them to reach out. I'm really happy to help. These calls are absolutely for free. And I would really like to help them just to, to create some plan and to set on the path to attract their soulmate. Wow, you are amazing. I just love you. Oh my goodness, that's <laughs> wonderful. You know, this is my 17th episode. And I mean, you, you are just amazing. I'm just so happy to have you here. And I want you to know that I support you in creating your podcast as well. And if you have any questions or need any tips or pointers, you know, I'm here for you. And I would love for us to stay connected. Absolutely, we will. Absolutely. I mean, I mentioned even when we started talking about being guests on this podcast that I will be starting my podcast and I would love people like you to be my guests and just to continue spreading this message and talk, just talk about topic on love because as you said, that can inspire people, heal people and really help them in so many different ways. Definitely. Sandra, I have a few more questions for you. The one question I always like to ask my guests when the pages of your life are reviewed, what do you want to be remembered for? Hmm. Really good question. Mm -hmm. Your life's work, like what did you represent? What legacy would, are you leaving behind? I would really like to be remembered exact, exactly for my mission as somebody who was bringing more love 
into other people's life. Because for me, that's like the highest service that I can do. And that is my mission here. So even when we help one people, that is a lot. And if we are blessed to help more people than that, that is even like much bigger blessing. So as much as I can help on my Mm -hmm. mission, I would really like to be remembered for that. That's wonderful. And I believe that you have achieved that intention today by talking to us and letting us know that no matter what has happened to us in our past, we can let go of that hurt, learn to love ourselves, and then that way we can attract the love of our lives. And yeah. really, I, I know I shouldn't say this, but I'm going to say it. Life is not complete without love. And a lot of times women will feel, you know, I'm independent. I don't need a man. I don't need, we need, we need that companionship. We all do. And I think that love is important not just in romantic relationships, but in every relationship that we have. I used to have a job where I would go to work every day and I loved my job. And people would say, well, why do you love your job? It was just a love inside of me. And I think that's what brought out the best of me. So when you go into something and you give love and it's the most, the main focus of your your operations is love, it brings, it automatically brings out the best in you. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. As I have told you, my definition of love, love is a state of being. So it's impossible for me to love life, love myself, and then hate somebody or hate my job or something like it. it, It's just impossible. Yes, (laughs) it is. Because when you start with love, then you automatically see good in other people. You see good in your work because everything, things are just things and people are just people. We all have good and bad, right? But if I'm seeing good, if I love, I will see good in you. If I don't love myself, I cannot see good in you, right? Exactly. Everything else is our mirror. That's it. Nothing more than that. And if I see something bad in someone, I'm seeing only myself. I cannot recognize in anyone else except what I am. Yes. You know, Sandra, you have so much knowledge and wisdom in this category. I really think you should write a book. I think you should. I really think you should, because it's like, even though I'm interviewing you right now, I regret the fact that I can't take notes on what you're saying, because you're really giving some really vital good information. So I don't know, you might want to think about that for the future. Well, a published author, a, a pub, listen, a published love author. How does that sound? That sounds amazing. <laughs> but it's very, it's very interesting, because when I'm imagining my future, I always like, you know, I've done this meditation and you have vision of your future and like what you are doing on that most important day, like I'm having a publisher calling me to ask about my book. (laughs) (laughs) Well, we're going to manifest that for you, Sandra. I think it would be a a New York Times bestseller because it's on the biggest topic of life and that's love. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. So Sandra, before we wrap up, Sandra, is there anything else that you want our listeners and our viewers to know about you? Well, I think that I shared majority of of things that I have to share because of, I mean, your amazing questions first and this amazing show. You are just bringing up all this good energy and all this good information. (laughs) But I would really love to say to people that just to remember who they are, that they remember that in core of their being, they are, they are love. And that mm-hmm. is their true nature. Everything else is illusion. And if they feel anything else, they can change it and they can always remember who they are by tapping into their true nature. So I really want to encourage everyone to try to tap into that love, to tr- tap into self-love, into self-worth, into their own confidence, because that is who we are in the core of our being. And of course, if they need help with that, people are available, support is available. You don't have to go through everything on your own. I haven't gone through everything on my own, and I (laughs) probably none of us will ever go through everything on our own. So ask for support, ask for help, because that is also a way of receiving love. If I'm able Mm -hmm. to accept support and ask for support that is also opening to receive you don't have to do everything on your own people are available like you like me people are available to help so if you cannot see that on your own ask somebody people are available and they are really willing to help you and even listen to podcasts like this that can change everything for you because I remember when I started my own you know, growth journey, working on myself. First thing that I was doing was listening to podcasts and they really changed my life. 
Mm-hmm. Sandra Hay, it's been a pleasure. It's thank been a pleasure. So thank you so much. I bow to your excellence. Thank you so much for being here and spreading your mission of love. And it has been well received. And I'm actually going to go back later and take some, watch it again and take some notes because you've given me some really valuable information you've given our viewers. And I want to, I want to stay connected with you. I want to keep in touch with you and thank you for being here and helping me honor my mission to keep a legacy of love in honor of my father. That means the world to me. So thank you so much, Sandra. And is there anything else you'd like to say before we go? I just wanted to say thank you for having me here. And yeah, your mission is really to be admired. So I'm really honored to be part of it. Well, thank you, Sandra. And it's been a pleasure and we're going to stay connected. Absolutely. Yes. And for my viewers and my listeners, this podcast is available on all podcast platforms, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts. I'm going to upload the video to YouTube later today. So if you can't watch it all now, you can definitely come back later and take advantage of this valuable information later on. So thank you so much, Sandra, for being here and you and I will stay connected. Have a great Saturday. Same to you and have a great Saturday or any other day that you are listening to everyone who is listening to this. (laughs) Okay. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you. Bye-bye.